Well, hi there. Welcome back to Tech Travel and Twang, our Monday Momentum Edition. And Kristen and I have a special guest with us today. Hi, John. Hello. Glad to be here. Hello. Thank it's you. great to have you. Thanks. John Flanagan's with Amplify. John, do you want to tell us a little bit about Amplify? Sure. Yeah. So we work with DMOs to help them add to their existing websites, uh, you know, transactional OTA functionality. So our company has our background in short-term rentals, which is a, a space that we feel like in the in the DMO world can use better representations. We're trying to add to the professionalism uh, of the of the short-term rental industry and bring the power back to the destinations. So that's what we do. Absolutely. Kristen and I talk a lot about the short-term rentals oh, and, wow. and how that connects with the DMOs. And we're finding there's a lot of DMOs who are never even seeing the benefit of the short-term rental taxes. So that's, um, you know, that's it's a huge discussing. conversation. Yeah. And, and, and not only seeing the benefit, but not knowing what, what steps do I need to take to begin to realize a benefit from all the short term rental business. So it's a huge conversation. Very, very important. Mm -hmm. And what's also really important is John and I are here at DMA West in Mesa, Arizona right now. So conference this week. Great stuff. We're actually doing a little, this little Monday momentum before I get on stage and talk about digital destinations. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And then we're all headed, um, just so happens we are synced up on the conference circuit uh -huh. right now. We're all headed to e-tourism next week. Yes. Gearing up for that. But more importantly, Jen, going back to DMA West. So you have what, like less than a couple of hours before you take the stage, yep. for your session. How are you getting like, how are you motivating yourself and like getting yourself pumped up for that? That's what we want to know. Oh, that's a great question. And I will say after a uh, couple of hours of gangster rap this morning, I'm ready to, get <laughs> I'm ready to go. I did. I did. John, I did send Jen my uh, pregame playlist, which is how I get myself like... <laughs> prepared for the gangster rap I it's not very that. it's very hood i will say and i told jen i said please be prepared she was like oh girl you know i listen to all that gangster rap <laughs> <laughs> very so, yeah. i think uh, i think i was listening to um neil young last night so super like all over the board but well, remember our first website when we had our little playlist in there we used to always talk about like who do we who do we like who gets <laughs> us like riled up and it was like Ludacris, Dolly Parton, like the list was crazy <laughs> random. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But as far as like motivation goes, really, when it gets to, you know, having a talk, this is the most comfortable for me. You mm -hmm. know, th these are my people. This is just, you know, imparting some information and, you know, just opinions on where digital destinations are going. So like this is this is where I do my thing. So I'm super excited. Yeah. yeah. I think you're speaking at a good time during the conference because yesterday was was really cool. I think mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a rebrand happening oh, with yeah. DMA West. It's now One West Tech Alliance, mm -hmm. and uh, it's under some new, new leadership ultimately. Um, very exciting. A lot of momentum, yeah. a lot of positive vibes at the show. Uh, and, you know, the gangster rap thing in my, in my head made me remember yesterday, uh, Visit Mesa, the hosting DMO, had a really, really cool music video that they put together uh, promoting the destination of Mesa. It was so tastefully done, but it was, uh, I think it was a local artist and it was a rap song about Mesa and it was awesome. And the whole- uh, Oh, I love that. The, That's awesome. Kind of, everybody kind of had, kind of head bobbing during a conference. Yeah, so, I love that. I'm so glad video. you mentioned that about the new brand too. Melissa Reeves, the new CEO, the first, since they're not in a- um, you know, not managed by a management company anymore. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen with DMA West Tech or sorry, One West Tech Alliance. I'll say it right now. But no, it's going to be, uh, I think that's going to be interesting to see how that unfolds here at the host city. Visit Mesa really is kind of a cut above yeah, in great. their marketing. Yeah, we always talk about that too, Jen. Like we love kind of following their, you mm -hmm. know, what they're doing out in the industry. And it's very, they take some really fun, innovative approaches to like getting in front of a, a new audience, which is really refreshing. For sure, <laughs> for sure. Well, you're headed out with me to eTourism next week. So what's your momentum, your Monday momentum for getting ready to do the next conference? 
I think e tourism, well, for e tourism specifically, I really enjoy that conference because it doesn't feel like you're going to conference. It feels like you're joining a group of people that you know, that you work with consistently, that you follow throughout the year. It's almost like a little reunion. But at the same time, we learn so much from that conference. Like we, th that's one of the conferences I feel like I get really jazzed about because I can go to sessions and I walk out of there with pages and pages of notes and ideas and, you know, those light bulb moments that you get in, in the middle of those really great sessions. And so I am like, I'm jazzed up for that. I'm also like, cause our clients and a lot of our industry people know where we're going. They're like, Hey, make sure if they talk about this, go see what they're doing over here. Like bring back more Intel. So it's also like a gathering for us of like, what can we bring back and what knowledge can we dig into there at the conference that benefits those that we can't go, those that don't get that same experience, like what can we really bring back? So, yeah, I yeah. Know, I'm super it. jazzed to go in general. Like this is one of those conferences I don't really have to like, oh, it's conference week. Like I'm excited for it. No, absolutely. And for those who can't be in the room, that's, you know, I think what we want to do is be able to bring back those learnings and, right. you know, just some great sessions have happened here as well at, uh, at One West. I have to keep reminding myself no, how to hard. say it now because I've said DMA West for so many years, but, um, but no, just some really good stuff. And what I love about these conferences, this one and the upcoming e-tourism is what you find out from the vendor perspective, which is like a kind of a whole other perspective, right? Is we kind of get down the competition a little bit and we have real conversations and we learn from each other. So yes. I, the vendor yes. aspect, a lot of people don't know, like we have our own little tribe, our little helping each other out. And it's not always so much business to go around. There's no reason to Scratch. No, absolutely. And I mean, in complete transparency, there are conferences where that collaboration isn't, you know, as collaborative. <laughs> well, you know, I'm trying to be polite when I'm saying this, but you know what I mean? It just doesn't feel like you could go and have those like deeper conversations and talk about things and really like dig into what's working, what isn't like. I feel like at e-tourism, you can bring all that. You can bring your, you know, what's worked. You can bring your failures. You could talk about, you know, things that you're doing and not feel like you have to be like, get into the proprietary talk. It just feels way more collaborative. And I feel like it's one of the conferences, one of the very few, I think, where you go into that feeling that way. So. Yeah. And I always reason get to John too, because John's kind of new to the DMO conference market, but you've been in the short-term rental conference market for a while. What, what are those like? It's uh, it's such a wildly different experience coming to a DMO conference for me yeah. today versus going to a traditional vacation rental conference where uh, I've been fortunate in my career to have made a ton of friends along the way, whether they be competitor vendors or property managers. And, and one thing yeah. that's really fun in the short term rental space is that uh, when you get to know vendors, you find out that they are also just trying to do what is in the best interest of their clients. And then collectively, if we push each other, then, you know, competition is a good thing. And uh, the, the beneficiary is the is the client at the end of the day. And so as we've tried to, to make our way into this new DMO space where when I go to a conference, no one knows who I am. It feels like I'm on day one of my career all, all over again. But what has been fun is is going and introducing uh, myself and ourselves uh, with the Amplify team to uh, vendors, whether they be competitors or just uh, you know the 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 elephants of the space, like Simple mm -hmm. View, for example, who everyone knows and knows everyone. Right. For us to be able to piggyback on some of those relationships and uh, mm -hmm. you know, make friends with folks like like you guys as well yeah. makes it a bit easier. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I didn't we didn't we meet at an e tourism conference? Like, didn't that didn't, isn't that where the conversation started or no? Before you know, that, I, I've known Jen for for a bit longer. We have uh, some mutual friends, uh, uh, Annie Holcomb, of course. Yeah, yeah, we met virtually. I will say the first time we met in person was was e tourism last right. year. Yeah, okay. but John and I, you know, he was doing the very first desk con with us with Alex and Annie. You know, right, right, right. Really, we really found that John's voice from the vacation rental market, but also talking to the DMO market it was really imperative for us to have in Desticon. And so he's now a Desticon veteran. He did year two as yeah, well. And I'll never miss one. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Coming back around for year three. But, but awesome. I, I think it's, I think it's important. Like if there, if there's a single message that it would be a takeaway from, from short-term rentals and like the actual professionals in this space and is that regulation is a good thing and we want regulation. Mm -hmm. And it pushes the industry forward. And wow. what we are trying to do in Amplify as we enter the DMO space is not necessarily 
elevate short-term rentals above hotels or quote unquote traditional lodging. That's not at all mm -hmm. uh, what the goal is, but it is about uh, providing some equal representation for short-term mm -hmm. rentals and specifically mm -hmm. the ones that are doing everything right, that are properly licensed, that are remitting taxes the way that they're supposed to be doing and uh, you know, empowering a DMO to reward uh, their stakeholders or lodging partners locally that do everything right, right. And, and then not reward the ones that don't. And so that's, uh, that is what we are all about. And hopefully it creates an environment where a destination has full representation of all lodging options that are available to travelers. Absolutely. Rewarding the good players. I love that piece that you, uh, you doubled down on, because I think that we talk about momentum, we talk about, you know, how we get our Mondays. We also think about our DMOs and their stakeholders. And there's so many good partners on so many different levels, not just the lodging levels, but of course the eateries, the restaurants, the makers, the mom and pops, the shopping, like that's where we really try to think about, you know, how do we create value for those good actors? Oh yeah. And if we think about just the, the user experience side of it, just being able to do a much more thorough planning job with the DMO website, when you're able to see hotels, short-term rentals, you're able to see a mix of like all the opportunities within the destination too, to be able to plan. Um, and, and also I think it, it definitely elevates the idea of what the destination brings. Like we, I mean, there are some DMOs, um, that we work with that have like a handful of hotels, but hundreds of short-term rentals. And if you're looking at just the hotel inventory as a new, like potential visitor, you're thinking, well, they only have a few hotels. What's really there to do? You know, like what am I, what's the like entire like perception of the destination? I feel like that just elevates the experience and elevates the perception of what your destination brings when you're able to see all of that together. I think that's one of the one of the like connections with DMOs and I think just getting them to understand the value in it is really that user experience. Cause didn't we learn, was it last year, Jen, where we learned that only 16% of visitors utilize the DMO site in their planning yes. to a city. There's so many other, and it's like, okay, let me pop out to, you know, this short-term rental site. Let me pop out over here to go check out what's going on with these reviews. And so it's like bringing again, like bringing that DMO, experience back under the umbrella that they can control um giving them more of that inventory so i that's a, that's a huge thing it's a huge absolutely. again another big conversation so absolutely and i will say uh john and his friends really brought me back around to that thinking because obviously naturally i was not a fan of otas mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. i come from the days where we had to fight the otas back from taking the tax from the city and and demolishing the demo so you know, now that it's evolved, and that's a lot because DMOs didn't take advantage of having their own OTAs or getting on the board of an OTA really early because can't put a credit card online. So they missed that risk spot. And so it kind of now we're back around to where you really can't yeah. talk travel without talking booking. And that's why, you know, people like John in the industry make so much sense because it's you know, it's elevated, it, it rewards the good actors, it rewards the regulations that are followed, and it creates just a, a much more symbiotic tourism economy. Oh, it really does. And I'm and it's I think we can credit a lot of the social media uplift to giving DMOs a space again and being relevant in the destination as a planning tool. For so many years it was like, well, what's the CVB? What does the tourism site do? Like why do I need to go here when I have all these other places that I can go to plan? But it really now that cities are really like becoming the voice for their visitors and potential visitors again, it makes it's that we're in a new era. So, yeah, definitely. I think there's a there's another angle of this, too, that uh, is going to involve traveler mm -hmm. education over time. Yes. And, and at the end of the day, uh, if you, the DMO, is, is not the authority on short-term rentals and hotels, on lodging in general in your destination, then who is? And if mm -hmm. the answer is Expedia or Airbnb or Verbo or anyone else that has no real local skin in the game for your destination, then that is a failure on the part of the DMO, in my opinion. Obviously, I'm super biased in this, so let's like, <laughs> disclaimer for sure. But uh, if you know, a perfect example is if you search for condo and Gulf Shores, for example, obviously you get all the paid ads first, but then the top result uh, that is organic goes to gulfshores.com. And if a traveler clicks that link after searching condo and Gulf Shores, they do have some commercial intent. And if there's a tool there that it is optimized for conversion that makes it easy mm -hmm. for someone to book and then 
at the first glance, it's a little bit cheaper than whatever it is on Verbo or Airbnb, then that person right. will book with the DMO. Absolutely. And that benefits not only the destination because you control the whole experience, it benefits the actual local lodging provider as well because they actually can influence the, the traveler's experience in a more direct way mm -hmm. instead of having to go through an Airbnb, for example, to try to communicate. So there's pros on every level. And this is a one right. of those win-win opportunities, I think, in our industry collectively where we can really drive collaboration between DMOs and, uh, and their lodging partners. Absolutely. And there's something you said about intent that I really want to kind of throw a Jenga on for you. And that is, you know, and also just for, for our listeners as well, like the intent and where they are. And I hate the word funnel anymore or flywheel, both of those, forget those words, <laughs> but you know, where they are in their intention and their travel planning makes a lot of sense and what you're serving up. And, you know, we're in a concierge type environment. Now we expect more personalization, right? right. Touch, so at least make sure that where they are in their intent cycle, wherever they're searching, you know, solves their problems like the booking um, for John or, you know, like looking for specific itineraries or family friendly things. It's just all in that intent process. Yeah. Awesome. Love it. That, uh, was a, that was a good little deep dive into the short term rental need like that. And again, like we're taking these are conversations that are you're, you're seeing now at the conference you're at. We're going to see them next week. They're going to continue to evolve. So this is continuous conversation for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're always so happy. So we don't re really need a lot of motivation for Monday because we're going to see John and his buddies next week. Yeah. We'll call our friends next week. We're excited. I and think that's the biggest part of our momentum. Vegas is yeah. fun too. It's hard to Vegas not. Is always fun. <laughs> yeah, that is very true. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we hope you guys have a great week and thanks for tuning in to our Monday Momentum edition. Thanks, Kristen. Thanks, thanks John. Guys. Thank you. Bye, thanks, guys. Thanks, John.